Hey, today I want to talk to you about the false notion that grief should have a time frame and a time limit. I think people that uh, decide that that's the truth, that our grieving should be um, limited, probably have never had deep grief like we have, especially those of us who have lost a child. It's really difficult. You know, I have been grieving my son, Matt, for the last six years. And, you know, there are days when I can get along fine, and um, there are some days when I don't even really think about it. But then there are days where that grief just comes hitting me, like it's so fresh, the waves are so powerful, that I can't even believe it myself, that after this time frame, that it still hurts so deeply, that my tears still flow uncontrollably, and the pain is so powerful that... Even myself, I'm, I'm shocked that the power of this grief has lasted this long. I guess the reason I want to speak to you today about this is because, you know, I, I get so upset at people who tell all of us, and I'm sure if you're grieving, you've heard it too, that uh, it's time for us to get over it. Um, it's time for us to get on with our lives, that our kids would want us to be happy, that they're in a better place, and so on and so on and so on. And I understand all that. I do believe that Matt is in a better place. I believe he's healed. I believe he's in heaven and he's at peace. But that doesn't make it any easier. That doesn't mean that me not being able to speak to him every day like we did, not being able to see him every day, not being able to have him over for dinner, or just hang out at the beach like we both loved. It doesn't make it any easier. And I understand that people might get tired of grievers, but you know, I think they need to really think about what we go through. And I know it's difficult. Um, it's very difficult to imagine what it's like to lose a child. I couldn't even comprehend it myself until it happened to me. The sad thing is a lot of people who I thought were my friends, who were my dear close friends, who I stood by, one lost her husband and she was grieving and I never once said to her, you know, it's been a year, you know, it's been two years, um, it's been three years, uh, maybe it's time you forget about him and move on with your life. Another dear friend of mine had lost a child at a very young age and she had been 25 years in her grief. And I remember one day I was going into the Y to do a yoga class and she was coming out of the Y and she was sobbing. And I asked her what was wrong. And she said, oh my God, I just had a flashback of my son and it hit me so hard. And rather than saying, oh my God, seriously, it's been 25 years. This is crazy. I sat her in my car and I let her cry. I didn't say anything because I know there are no words, but I just let her cry. I let her be. I let her grieve. And I think that's what we need to do for each other. But these two people that I've mentioned, they have walked out of my life. They have more or less said that uh, my grieving was too much for them, that they couldn't take it anymore, that they didn't want to be around an unhappy grieving person. And I really think that's sad. I, I think grief is it's not catchy, it's not contagious. And I think a lot of people think if they are with grievers that they're going to somehow be catch it, that, that something in their life is going to happen so terribly that, um, you know, they're going to be grieving right along with us. And that, that's so sad. I, I just think if you're a griever, you have every right to grieve. I, I always have said that grief is as individual as a fingerprint. Nobody grieves the same way. Nobody grieves in the length of time, um, some people might be better after the first year, after the fifth year, after the tenth year. But none of us should be criticized because we are grieving, especially our children. I, I think it's okay that we're not okay. And I think that society and our friends and sometimes even people as close as our family members have to understand that we are doing the best that we can every day. Our children were in our lives, we carried them, we gave birth to them. Um, sometimes we might have only had them for a year, sometimes we've had them for 37 years, like I had my son Matt. But 
my point is, you know, there really is no time frame and no one should make us feel guilty. The fallacy that, you know, you get through the first years and you'll feel better, it really is just a fallacy. Um, I found after the first year, the second year hit me even harder because in that first year, I truly believe that your brain wraps you in this safe, warm cocoon and it doesn't let you really face reality. And then that second year comes and wow, that cocoon is disappearing and reality is seeping in. And little by little, day by day, month by month, you realize that, my God, my child is really gone and he or she is not coming home. There won't be any more birthdays. There won't be any new pictures. We'll never see them with a spouse or a child. It's just heartbreaking. Um, I think the loss of a child is so hard because we don't just lose our present. We lose our dreams for our future with our children, for what we thought their lives were going to be. And, and like I said, I, I don't think we should feel bad about ourselves or put ourselves down or even try to convince ourselves that there's something wrong with us because there really is nothing wrong with us. The fault lies within society. The fault lies within the premonition or a preconceived notion that grief should just go away, that it's not healthy, that it's not a good thing, that, you know, we should get over it. And um, it's just impossible. And if you're a grieving parent, I want you to know that it's okay. Please don't beat yourself up. Um, society does that enough for us. We really just need to allow ourselves to grieve, uh, cry, do whatever you need to do. And, you know, I think the reason that I wrote this book, Letters to Matt, was because I wanted parents to understand, and family members and friends to understand, that grief is its not like the flu. There's nothing that we can do or take to get rid of it. It's part of who we are now. Um, this is my son's ashes in uh, natural flowers, and I wear it because I always keep him close to my heart. People say, oh, that's morbid. You have your son's ashes? Uh, yeah, I do. And for me, it's comforting. For some people, maybe it is a little off. But, you know, no one has the right to tell anyone how to grieve. We need to stand up for each other. We need to take care of each other. We need to allow each other to grieve however it is that we grieve. I would hope that whatever you take away, if you're a griever, you know that you are normal. What you're going through is normal and please don't question yourself or put yourself down or listen to people who aren't walking in your shoes. And if you aren't a griever, I hope you understand that we don't need your opinions. We don't need your judgments. What we need is for you to sit with us Allow us to talk about our children without making us feel guilty or without you being uncomfortable. Our children lived and in our hearts, they still live. And I know myself, as long as I am alive, I will continue to tell Matt's story. And like I said, that's why I wrote my book, Letters to Matt. If you're a griever, I think this book will help you. It will show you that it's okay. Like I said, I am six years out. And there are days where I feel like it was just yesterday. And it, like I said, I, it still shocks me, but I get through it and I know that I am okay. And that, you know, one day I will see him again and it will be wonderful. But until then, I continue to grieve what could have been. So if you take anything from this, please know that it's okay that we're never going to be okay again. Our world just will never be okay. And there's no way that we can make it okay. So just take it easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Don't let friends or family make you feel that there's something wrong with you because there truly isn't. Our hearts have been broken. Our lives have been shattered. And it's very, very hard to put those pieces back together. It's like a broken vase. You can put it back together, but there are cracks and there are pieces that are missing and they will always be missing. So, well, like I said, grief has no time frame. It has no rhyme. It has no reason. It is what it is. 
and we get through it individually. And I hope for you that you will give yourself a break, take it easy, don't beat yourself up, and don't allow anyone else to make you feel that you are not doing what you should be doing. Um, it's funny, a lot of you have asked me about my hair. Um, well, since Matt's death, I have been diagnosed with uh, thymus cancer and I had to go through chemo and radiation and surgery. And I call these my chemo curls. Um, I was really excited when uh, my hair started coming in straight because I've always wanted straight hair. And then all of a sudden these corkscrews started popping out. So I just kind of laugh and say, you know what? God's got a really good sense of humor. Um, and you know, it is what it is. And I'm just glad that I have hair. So really moms and dads, take it easy and be good to yourselves and don't let anyone else make you feel that there's anything wrong with you because I can tell you from a mother's point of view, you're perfect. Everyone have a great day.